Tonight we are wearing green ribbons in honor of a very special girl I met when I was teaching her third grade fire prevention at the Montessori School. Her name is Aileen Fearon, a freshman at Enfield High School. She has a rare autoimmune disease that affects her life greatly. I ask you to take a minute tonight and pray for her. Pledge. to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Fire evacuation announcement. Uh, in case uh, we have need to evacuate this chamber, there are two exits, one directly in front of me to your rear, go out the doors uh, directly to the outside. Uh, the other exit is to my left, go through the double doors, take an immediate left, down the stairs, and out the double doors to the outside. Kathy, roll call, please. Mr. Grady. Here. Mrs. Suzak. Here. Mr. Feely. Here. Ms. Hall. Here. Mrs. Rancourt. Here. Mr. Janitis. Over here. Mrs. LeBlanc. Mr. Johnson. Chairman Neville. Here. We, uh, item number six, approval of minutes. Uh, we have a need to approve the special meeting minutes for May 15, 2012. Do I hear a motion? So moved. Mo moved by Vinny, seconded by uh, Joyce. Any discussion? That being said, uh, by a show of hands, all those in favor? Any opposed? Any abstention? Okay. Uh, again, we have the need to approve the meeting minutes the special meeting minutes for May 22nd and the regular meeting minutes for May 22nd. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. Mo moved by Vinny and seconded by Joyce. Is there any discussion on either one of those minutes? That being said, by a show of hands, all those in favor? Any opposed? Any abstentions? Item 7, board guest, Dr. Gallagher. I'm going to call Mr. Newton up first. I think Mr. Newton's um, prepared to introduce the first um, board guest, and uh, it's uh, the winner of the 2012 Governor Scholarship Award, which is a very prestigious award, and you'll hear that in just a moment from Mr. Newton. Unfortunately, Audrey's not with me tonight. I thought she was going to be here. Uh, she is also the marshal for the class of 2012, and so my presumption is maybe she's at home studying for her exam for tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> um, but she was supposed to be here. Um, it is a great honor. Audrey's our third governor scholar that we've had in the 11 years that I've been affirming. So they are, <clears throat> it's truly a, a very prestigious award. Each year, all the Connecticut high schools, I believe this year there was, with all the magnet schools, about 173 schools, uh, submit one candidate for the award. There's a, there's a set criteria for, um, it's like a rubric that they use to develop the winner. The winner also has to, or the candidates also have to open up on a particular day a secret essay question and they have to write about it and that writing sample goes into the determination of the governor's scholars for the year. Um, the Connecticut Association of Schools picks the top three jun 30 juniors in the entire state out of the 173 that apply. Uh, we were fortunate enough to have Audrey be selected. Um, she was honored at a banquet at the AquaTurf Club a couple of weeks ago, and uh, unfortunately, she's not here with us this evening, but uh, it is a huge honor, and I thank you for inviting her. We appreciate it. If you could take the certificate for her, sure. if you would, Mr. Newton, and uh, let her know how proud we are of her. I will. Thank you very thank much. You. Okay, and, and next I would ask Mr. Van Tassel to come up from the middle school, Kennedy Middle School. Uh, Mr. Van Tassel has two groups of students he'll introduce, and we're, we're welcoming them as well. I want to thank the board for giving us the opportunity to uh, be here tonight to acknowledge uh, three students. Uh, there is a fourth who is not here tonight. Um, the first two students that I'm going to introduce to you right now, uh, one is Thomas Vos, and the other is Rebecca Rogers. Why don't you guys come on up? Uh, both Thomas and Rebecca were chosen this year as our Connecticut Association of Schools Scholar Leaders. Uh, they were awarded at a ceremony uh, the, first, uh, the first Monday of June. Um, this is for their scholarship and leadership um, uh, 
demonstration that they've done throughout the course of this school year. We're very proud of them. It is a prestigious award, one of which um, we do recognize two students every single year. Uh, we're very proud of them, and we certainly hope that this is uh, something we'll be seeing from them again in the future. So, uh, Rebecca Rogers and Thomas Vos. Now the second, there were actually two who participated in an essay contest uh, this year. Um, it was brought to us uh, through a member of the town council and it was involving the energy uh, efficiency smart concepts. It was an essay contest that was conducted at the state level. Uh, there were over 700 applicants or 700 students who wrote essays and submitted them and uh, we were notified that two of our students placed in the top five. So they had a ceremony at the state capitol of which they were to announce who were the two that, or who were the, th the top three. It turned out that two of our students at John F. Kennedy Middle School out of the 700 were in the top three. We had a second place essay and a third place essay. Our second place essay uh, contest winner is Cheyenne Ellis and she is here with us. In the, uh, the, the second student President is Alicia United Peralta. The state's candidate. Uh, and I'm going to read you what their performance task actually was. The performance task was as seventh grade students, their task was to write a two page speech. You are running for President of the United States and you have been asked to give a speech about how the nation can be more energy efficient. Write a two page persuasive speech to the American public about your policy regarding energy conservation, energy efficient technologies, and clean renewable energy sources. Make sure to consider both sides of the argument. They did an outstanding job. I did bring copies of the essay so that you guys had an opportunity to read those. Um, and I will certainly share uh, your congratulations to Alicia Peralta when I see her tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you once again for having us here tonight. And, and the final group that the board wanted to, re to um, recognize tonight are the student representatives to the board. And I know we just came from the Honor Society dinner, and Carrie Davis is sick. She unfortunately wasn't able to make the dinner. And Patience Pierce was at the dinner. And I think the middle school kids will figure this out pretty quick. When you get into high school this time of year, everyone goes home to study for finals. So, so those two people were here. Um, they were recognized, I believe, at the scholarship night and the award nights yes. at their high schools by, by board members. And we'd also like to recognize the alternates. It was Amanda Stroy who was also at the Honor Society dinner at, from Fermi High School, and Dennis Conley, who I believe was there from Enfield High School. So we appreciate that. Um, later this evening, the board will act on approving the student representatives for the 2012-13 year. But if those students are present, I would ask that they stand, and if their principals are here with them, if they would bring them up and introduce them to the board so we can see who they are for next year. And if they're here, that's great. And if they're not, we understand. Um, high school students are studying for tests. So um, perhaps we could ask Mr. Duffy to go first and introduce his students. And Great want to make sure you speak into the mics so the people on the um, TV can see, can see who we are. We have our uh, representative, Brandon Ann Dexler, right, who will be, uh, I'm sure, dependable. Very involved with uh, our, our youth boat programming and so far with the Spain uh, exchange. It really represents, I think, a wide variety of activities and interests. And we have Rachel Kalet, right? again, a brilliant student that knows everything that she needs to know, and but will certainly be willing to contribute. Uh, involved in, again, a lot of school activities, including sports. Um, good representative, I think, for uh, between the students, which will be a wide variety of students will listen, and I think we'll really be uh, happy to have these two young people represented to high school with you next year. So it's Brandon and Rachel, the Board of Education. Welcome. Thank you. Welcome. Congratulations. We'd be happy to shake your hand. All right. 
and from Fermi High School, Mr. Newton. Hi, thank you. Uh, I have uh, our, our alternate and our representative as well. Our representative for next year is Katie Saltzgiver, and our alternate for next year is Emily Quayle. Um, they are, like Mr. Duffy's students, outstanding students, uh, very strong academically. Okay. Um, what I will, I'm going to go a little different than what Mr. Duffy did and talk about what impressed me the most about both these young ladies. Um, in our interview yeah. process, we asked them we to about their ideas of what they could do if they were queen for the day to change into public schools. And what I was amazed was with the depth and maturity that both these young ladies put into the answers that they had, not only for that question, but for the whole range of questions in their interview. They are mature beyond their years, and I know that they both will be outstanding representatives to the Board of Education. So thank you very much for having us here this evening. Okay. Does that mean we won't get any information about what their plans are to improve the schools? to tell you, you have big shoes to fill. The folks we've had this year were wonderful and uh, very, very loyal. They were here and they, they contributed well on behalf of each of their schools. So we welcome you and we look forward to having you here in September. And we'll be contacting you to go over the responsibilities and so on at, at some point in the not too distant future. But thank you for uh, volunteering. Okay. At this point, uh, we have a couple of other awards that we'd like to give. and. Uh, um, the board has come up with some things that they, they'd like to, some things they want to recognize and, uh, and some people they want to recognize. So we have them here this evening and we're tacking it on to, uh, at the, with the board's approval to uh, this recognition piece with our, uh, our student groups. Uh, Ms. Ms. Uh, Chamurka is, is leaving us and so we want to recognize her. And uh, we have uh, Linda Cavanaugh and Tony Torrey and Dr. Gallagher. Uh, I know that there'll, there'll be some groaning over here because uh, Dr. Gallagher would like to leave us very, very quietly, but uh, the board has overruled him and they want to recognize uh, the four of you. So I'd like to begin with Chris Chamurka, if she would come up and uh, you can get that. Can you hear me? Okay. Uh, Chris has been our business manager since April 27, 2009 uh, until June 30th. She has a couple more days here at 2012. Uh, you've been here. You've done a wonderful job for us. All of us have worked with you, and, and we couldn't thank you more for the work that you've done. You've uh, trained us. You've helped us. You've kept our numbers straight so that we could get these things doing, going, and uh, we just wanted to show you a little sign of our appreciation. You can take this to South Windsor with you, you and we're going to miss you. Congratulations. <laughs> We, all, we also have a golden apple, but knowing the, the extent of our finances here, it's not real gold, just so you know that, okay? We have a little problem with that. Congratulations. Okay. Linda, come on down. First of all, congratulations, okay? 
I've worked uh, with Linda for all of the time that she's been here and been very, very pleased to do that. But we want to offer you some congratulations. You've been here 23 years. I, I didn't think it was that long, but I, you, know, you, know, you, you wear it well. Okay, she was a principal of, uh, of several elementary schools here and uh, for uh, 12 years and 11 years as our curriculum director. She's done an outstanding job and uh, I, we can't thank her enough. So on, on behalf of the board, we'd like to present you with a golden apple. You've never forgotten your primary mission to be a teacher in all your various roles here, and we'll always remember that. You knew why you were here, and, and that's why that apple is, is, uh, is very, very appropriate. We also have a, uh, a uh, plaque for you. You won't be able to hang it in your office. Maybe your home office here, okay? We thank you for all you've done for all the children of Enfield for over these 23 years. We're gonna miss you. We wish you a long and healthy retirement, and uh, come back and see us, please. Thank you. Mr. Tory, I know you like to be on stage here. Come on down. First of all, congratulations. Um, the board wants to publicly acknowledge the positive impact you've, your long career has had on the Enfield Public Schools and on the entire Enfield community as well. I speak for the entire board in saying thank you for all you've done for the children of Enfield. You've been a resource to this Board of Ed and many previous Boards of Ed in carrying out our elective responsibilities. We have tremendous respect for you as an educator and as a person. And to that end, we'd like to present you with a plaque and a golden apple on behalf of the entire Board of Ed, commemorating your time and dedication to the Enfield community. The Board of Ed also wishes to give you a gift as a small token of our appreciation for your work. And uh, we have a, a, another thing that'll be coming a little bit later in the evening, so we'll, 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 we'll deal with this right now. <laughs> Congratulations, Tony. My pleasure, Tony. We may want to read this. I was seven. <laughs> I know. I think this warrants reading. Am I on here? Okay. A.D. Higgins, teacher, 1959 to 1965. Enfield High School, math department chair, 1965 to 1967. Enfield High School, assistant principal, 1967 through 1968. Enfield High School, principal. Really? You were the principal when I graduated. <laughs> 1969 to 1970. Enrique Fermi High School principal, 1970 through 73. Assistant superintendent of schools, 1973 to 2012. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Wonderful. I won't be lying. Everybody knows that. Um, I, first of all, I want to uh, dispel some rumors that I wasn't with George Washington when he crossed the Delaware. I wasn't there. Not at all. Although I have been around here for quite a while. Uh, Enfield has been my hometown where I was born and brought up. 53 years I worked for the Enfield Public Schools. Uh, but I just would say this, that uh, my uh, dedication and belief in the public schools of America and the inextricable connection to uh, to our democracy. Uh, I just can't see any separation there that I, wish, I would say to everybody, guard your public schools well. Uh, the work that happens every day never reaches the newspapers, but it is such a, what I see happening every day, and I, I know I speak for John, in the classrooms and in the schools and working with educators and the Board of Education, I get paid for this job, you don't. Uh, so the dedication, I just, it's a great part of our country. And, I want to thank the community and uh, the, uh, the citizens of Enfield for allowing me to work with their children. Thank you. We have a second piece that not on time right now. The mayor is a little bit late. He had a golf game tonight, and uh, he's getting here uh, in about 10 or 15 minutes. Uh, but we. Basically, I think John and Tony, a lot of people have been calling us and saying they want, what are you doing for, for John and Tony? How are we recognizing the good things that they've done? And uh, we keep saying they don't want to do it. They want to leave here quietly, and nobody wants to do that. And this board doesn't want to leave, let you leave quietly as well because we think you've done an awful lot over the last 
20 years for John, and I won't even add a number in for you, Tony, but you, you, have, you have both done a tr tremendous job here, and I think uh, um, we basically just wanted to show our thanks to you, and, uh, and this is one of those things you just have to let people do that. So the mayor will be coming with a proclamation for each of you, and when he does, we'll suspend the rules and, and, uh, and, and do that. But uh, Tony, I want you to know that um, you're going to be missed. You've influenced all of us. You've made me think differently. I think you've made us all think differently just in, in your part here. And I, I think we're definitely a better place because of both your presences here. And uh, we wish you um, a long and healthy retirement, and you will be missed, both of you. Now, John, it's your turn, OK? And I know you've made it clear to us that you would like to move quietly into retirement, and uh, we, we outvoted you, OK? I'm sorry. <laughs> it, it's, it's not Kathy's fault. I ordered her to, do, to get me the plaque. So, so just take it out on me, John. OK. OK, but because of the positive contribution you've made to the school system and the entire town over the last 20 years, the board felt needed uh, the need to publicly uh, acknowledge what you've done. And, I, and, and uh, I think they're proud of what you've done, and we want to recognize your contribution. Even though I've worked with you for 19 years, OK, I have a whole new respect for what you do based on just the last six months that I've been working with you. The skill sets that's needed to be a superintendent of schools in this day and age is just unbelievable. And uh, I, 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 I've always respected you, but it's an it's a increasing respect based on, on what I know that you go through on a daily basis. And I, I applaud you for what you've been able to do and, and pull off here. One of the things that you've never lost, and I remember your first speech to us in front of all of the um, uh, teachers at the opening day, and, and you talked about the importance of teachers and the impact that they made on kids. You said they were the most important person that a kid would meet, okay, and that you had all this power over them. And I never forgot that. And, and I, I think you carried that out all the way through in the way you selected teachers and the way you, you uh, I think you mentored, mentored folks. Uh, being a school superintendent is certainly not an easy job. Uh, it requires a lot of skills, a lot of talents, and uh, I think in, sometimes in this town, a very, very thick skin at times to get, to get through it all. Uh, to be successful, you have to have a vision. You have to have an incredible amount of skills, an incredible amount of patience, even to work with all of us, John, okay? But I, I think you also have to keep your eye on the ball, and I think you have over these last 20 years. So we just wanted to congratulate you. We wanted to publicly uh, salute your 20 years here, uh, and um, we wanted to uh, show our appreciation. So we have two gifts. You are a teacher. You get the teacher's apple, okay? You haven't forgotten where you are. And we, we have a plaque for you to add to your... Uh, your, your uh, awards that you've received in uh, Superintendent of Schools, July 1, 1992 to June 30, 2012. Appreciation of your dedication to the students, families, faculties, and Enfield Board of Education. Thanks, John. I'd like to just simply say that it's been my privilege and pleasure to be the school superintendent in Enfield, Connecticut for 20 years. It's been a very enjoyable trip. Um, the thing that I've enjoyed the most have been the people. I have Kathy working on how many board members I've worked with. I think we're up to 60-something. And the only thing I would change in the Enfield school system when you were asking the student, I would ask that they somehow change the town charter to allow board members and council members to run for three- and four-year terms overlapping because every two years it's, a, it's tough to change as many as we do. So all of you first timers here right now, you've got to come back for at least two more years because you're learning the ropes on this first run. So it would be nice if you came back. And I, I'd love to someday see a um, board member that put in 20 years as well. That would be great. Thank you. Thank you, John. I was hoping maybe the board president was going to be you're going to cancel my last board meeting, but I guess that didn't, that didn't happen. All right, thank you. The off button. <laughs> uh, I thank the uh, the audience for uh, bearing with us as we uh, honored our 
retiring folks. This is the um, biggest year that we've had in terms of turnover. Okay, it's very, very unusual. And they're not leaving, I think, because they're they're unhappy. They're leaving because they've they've had a very, very satisfying and and positive uh, career. And so we applaud them for that. And we just felt we needed to recognize them. And so I appreciate uh, your patience with us. We do have um, some proclamations that should be coming in any moment, and we'll, with the board's permission, we'll suspend the rules and and and, uh, and have them read by the mayor. So at this point, which number are we on here? Number eight. Number eight. Correspondence and communications, do we have any here? Uh, I have done. No okay. Uh, number nine, audiences. Is there anybody that's here to speak before the board? Hi, Lisa. Hi. Come on down. Hi, I'm Lisa Rogers. I'm the Eight Winter Way in Enfield. I come before you to speak on behalf of the Parent Leadership Academy. I am a graduate of first class. I'm the coordinator of this class, the seventh year. I want to thank you publicly for supporting our program and helping us with the grant that we've received with the state. I thank Dr. Gallagher and Ms. Hall for coming to our graduation. Mm -hmm. We report back that we had 12 parents apply, go through the program, and graduate. We had no dropouts this year. Nice. I report as well that we had three male, I'm sorry, male graduates. He does it to us all the time, so <laughs> don't feel bad. I'd like to also report that We, out of the 12, we had seven with perfect attendance. And I find that attendance to just show the, the stamina and, and the quality of the, the education they are receiving as leaders. Um, I publicly want to thank the town council, the school principals, the town staff, as well as, as, as Nantuck Community College for providing the space that we um, help hold the courses in. Um, at as Nantuck, Jim Limbella and Julie Cotner were really um, wonderful support people there. On our education side, um, this year we did partner with Adult Education, and Kathy Chapdelaine was able to bring us two different um, people through their programs, the general education program as well as the Engl English as a Second Language. Um, they are lifelong learners, and I'm really excited to have them come become part of our uh, leadership program. Um, publicly, their names are Kim Bryson, Kara Carlin, Donna Devon, Micheline Gagner, Trudy Ann Graham, Tracy Hackett, Zakia Kamara, Michael Knapp, Christopher Mason, Jennifer Moncus, Tom Reynolds, and Belinda Stout. They're grandmothers, they're parents, they are step parents, they are. Oh, there was one other notoriety. It went out of my brain. But again, I want to thank you, and I'm very proud of this program, and I'm very proud of the fact that the town and the, this. Uh, Board of Education stands behind it. Thank you. Thank you, Lisa. You were one of our initial uh, folks, weren't you, in the program? Did yes. You? Yes. Yes, I am. Thank you. Glad you're taking it over. That's great. Thank you. Okay, um, anybody else would like to speak before the board? If no, then we'll we'll close audience. Uh, 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 communications. Mr. Neville, yeah. if I could, going back to correspondence, I have some correspondence for the board, but it needs to be seen in executive session, so I was hoping you could add a, an item, uh, possibly, uh, when you get to there. We need a motion, then, to add an item to to the agenda under executive session. I think, Vinny, do you? You have, um, oh. you have it on your thing there. Yeah. Do you have it there? Yeah, I do. That's the best part of the iPad. <laughs> okay. Oops. We move to uh, make a motion to suspend the rules and add an item to the agenda under the executive session for matters related to pending litigations, claims in litigation. There a second? Okay. Any discussion? This is a roll call, I believe. It's two thirds. If okay, Kathy, could you do the roll call, please? Mr. Grady. Yes. Mrs. Suzak? Yes. Mr. Feely? Yes. Ms. Hall? Yes. Mrs. Rancourt? Yes. Mr. Janitis? Yes. Mrs. LeBlanc? Yes. Chairman Neville? Yes. Motion passes. Okay, pass my baby back. <laughs> I'm telling you, I'm really getting the knack of this thing. 
Uh, th there are no other audiences. We'll move on to number 10, item 10, board member comments. And uh, we'll start uh, with uh, Donna, how about you? Oh, okay. <laughs> we'll trip it up a little bit here. No, we're gonna, it. We're gonna switch it up a little bit. Okay, first of all, it's getting to be the end of the year, and I would like to first of all thank Nathan Hale for having their Facebook page because I get a little bit of information all the time of what's going on at Nathan Hale School. And I understand they ran an event and collected 121 pounds of food for the food shelf. So I think that that deserves a little bit of recognition. And last night, I had the pleasure of going over to Fermi High School for the Fermi Expo, where the students put on display some of their best work. And um, it was pretty good. I was pretty impressed. The math, um, they had calculus um, explanations that even the people who don't understand calculus could understand, and science experiments, and every department was represented and well represented there. And I think what I took away from this is the fact that we do have a substantial integration of technology in our curriculum. You could see it in the students' work. You could see how one thing melded with another subject, that things are not so independent as they used to be along in eons ago. So I was pretty uh, proud to be a member of the Board of Ed and see the great work that is being done at the schools by the students. And uh, I think the teachers should say thank you for letting me teach your children. That's it for me. Kevin? Um, I, I actually wanted to recognize the Fermi girls volleyball team went to the state semifinals. And I don't know if they advanced further. Forgive me, I've been out of town a little bit. But um, it's a great accomplishment. We have some good sports teams in this town. Uh, but also, I wanted to recognize, tonight I got a chance to see the, the honors the National Honor Society people at the dinner and some of the students being recognized. And uh, about a week and a half ago, myself, Chairman Neville, uh, a couple other board members actually went to the adult education um, graduation ceremony. And I got to tell you, it was really encouraging because you see both sides where you have the, the, the Honor Society going through a traditional path of school and excelling in it, and it's wonderful. And to see some of the adult education people that through their own adversity and through whether it be their own social structure or, or economic climate, whatever has occurred in their life that's created a challenge for them to complete the task of getting their graduation out of the way, and they did it. And, and I absolutely was moved and applaud them with all of my heart. It was a great, great event to be a part of, and I thank you guys for it. Very good. Mrs. Hall? I definitely agree with Kevin on the adult ed graduation, it is impressive. Uh, I'd also like to brag about the Prudence Crandall School. They took first prize among all the schools for recycling. So they are now, each member of that school, a recycling, a recycling hero. They were presented by the recycling department in a town from the town hall and got a big uh, first prize label and several hundred dollars that can be used by the school for whatever purpose they might want to use. I don't haven't talked to the principal to find out exactly what they're going to get, but it should be most interesting. Bragging for Prudence Crandall. Very good. Jen? I don't have anything. Thank you. Peter? Um, I, I hope all the uh, teachers and kids uh, as the rest of the what's left of the school year, the closing goes well. This is probably one of the toughest times in, in, the, in the schools the last week, especially if it's hot. So good luck to all of them. Um, I'd like to remind people that uh, the 4th of July celebration is not that far away, and uh, there will be a booth, I think, being available for uh, the reorg, I mean the uh, consolidation, consolidation uh, thing. So. Uh, remind people to go and visit that. Uh, also, I would like to, and I'm just commenting, I, I, I hope it gets on the agenda. If not, then I'll, I'll try making a motion in the future. But I, want, I, I would like people to know, and I'd like this board to be aware of the fact that I think it's very, very important in the future 
that we have board members, particularly board members who have some negotiations experience, always at negotiation sessions or wage reopeners or any kind of reopeners, because uh, I was not very happy um, with what transpired this uh, this uh, spring. Um, so I, I would like all of you to sit down and really think about that, that we have somebody in that room with some experience every time. And usually there's enough diversity on the board member to have somebody uh, like that present. Uh, other than that, um, hope everybody has a nice summer. Thank you. Tina? Uh, sure, I have a couple of things. Um, the Eli Whitney fifth grade students just did their fifth grade field trip to Sturbridge Village this past Friday. It was a fun day, had by all. I know my son had a blast. Um, Hazardville has been busy. They had their field day, which I was able to volunteer at. I did some face painting. Fortunately, it was little things. It wasn't the whole <laughs> face. So that was <laughs> that was a good thing. The only thing I couldn't do was a tractor. I couldn't do the tractor. Um, and they also had their um, volunteer breakfast um, last Friday, which was really nice. The teachers uh, prepared breakfast for the volunteers, which was, was really nice. Um, I just want to say that I filled out my survey, so I hope the parents are filling out their surveys. Um, you don't need a stamp. You can send it right in the folder with your kids to school. So hopefully parents are filling out their sur surveys. Um, there's a lot of retirees in the school system, teachers, administrators, um, central office. I just wish everybody well. And um, being new to the board, I wish I could have worked with you longer. Um, but I really appreciate all you've done through the years than when I was just a parent. Um, and also, I'm the chair of the Finance Committee. And Chris Chamarka is leaving us, and I want to wish her well. I enjoyed working with her, and she showed me a lot. So, And I'll welcome Anthony. Thank you. Benny? OK, I have a couple things, so bear with me. Um, last night, I was um, able to attend the initiation ceremonies for the Enfield High Thespian Troop 5842. Uh, it was a nice little um, ritual, I guess they have, or thing they have when they induct the new members into their cast and everything, and saying goodbye to their seniors as well. Uh, Mr. Senior was the uh, guest host there, and he did a uh, nice job, and it was nice to see the kids really get into what they what they do with their uh, acting um, skills. Um, number two. I said, I would like to recognize a team of teachers and students from JFK Middle School who have been participating in the American Cancer Society's Relay for Life in Suffield for 10 years. The name of the team is Jane's Team. The team was named after a fellow JFK te teacher who passed away from cancer. In the last 10 years, this team of JFK students has raised over $120,000 to fight for the fight against cancer, which is fabulous. I would like to thank all the students who participated in the relay over the last 10 years. I would like to give a special thank you to Jane Team Captains Barbara Hargraves, Charlene Loria, and Kate Faltrip. Yeah. Okay, sorry about that, who have continued to guide these students in their fundraising efforts over the past 10 years. What I also would like to add on to this is that from this team has spawned other teams from to Enfield High and also Fermi to continue their their dedication to find a, a, a cure for cancer. And trust me, it means a lot to people who have cancer. So other than that, um, my opening um, remarks or my invocation tonight was about somebody I had met back when I was teaching third grade uh, some years ago, uh, Aileen. Uh, she's a very sweet girl. She's a freshman over at Enfield High School. Um, and she won the hearts of her fellow students and teachers there in a heartbeat when she got there. She's a very, very sick little girl in need of a liver transplant. Um, we're we wearing the green ribbons in honor of her. Also, it, it was also part of a fundraiser by two fabulous nurses that work at Enfield High School, Jackie Smith and Marianne Stroni, who started a a drive to raise some money for the families because her treatments and her back and forth has been going back and forth to New York City. And it's been very uh, time consuming and very monetary uh, consuming, I guess you want to say it, for the family ever since I met her back in third grade, off and on with this, this terrible thing that she has. 
The kids had just banded against uh, up with this girl. They raised over $8,000 for her. And her mother was presented a check just a few days ago. And it was just a, a fabulous thing from the green ribbons and bumper stickers and the green ribbons that we have on our lapels tonight. Um, if you go to their website, I believe you can still donate for this young lady. Um, she was close to getting a liver transplant just about a week ago. Um, hopefully that the next time it will be uh, a good thing for her and she will be on the road to recovery. Um, she is, you just meet her, you'll fall in love with her. She is just a, a very sweet, sweet girl. The last thing I wanna say is uh, I wanna wish all the uh, outgoing seniors luck in their future endeavors. If they choose to go into college or careers, I wanna wish the new students coming into the new high, uh, to the high schools uh, our, new, our new retirees coming up, uh, wish them luck in their retirement. And a special thank you to Tony and, and John. Um, I've been on this board for five years now. Uh, I remember meeting you guys for the first time and getting the ropes of what we're supposed to do. And it was nice to have a chat with you guys. We've continued to chats over the years and it was been, been a pleasure, it's been an honor, and I wish you guys health and and peace and quiet. <laughs> Rumor has it they're running for the school board. <laughs> it's been done by other We're retirees, Peter. Here. Yeah. <laughs> you never know. Well, listen, just to kind of wrap up, uh, I'd, I'd like to, to commend you, uh, Vinny, for getting that out there. I yeah. think these kinds of things illustrate the, the greatness in our community. Our kids are wonderful, our staff, our parents. And they wrap their arms around people uh, like Eileen, and and uh, it's it's just a tribute to our kids and and to their and to their parents. So thank you for bringing it up. And if you get me the website, we'll see if we can get in there. Okay. Uh, secondly, Fermi had their honors breakfast, and uh, they, this is the 11th year they've done it. They recognized 350 students for being honorable uh, at, on marking periods one, two, and three. Um, uh, the students received certificates, and I guess a Fermi gym bag as well, and I think they, they, they had a wonderful time. Usually we get to go to that, but we were so overbooked this month that we, we couldn't do it, so we'll try to, to get there more often next year. Uh, I also went to the Nathan Hale 50th anniversary, which was superb, and I, I just congratulate those folks. They did a great job. It was nice to see some folks I hadn't seen in a long time. And uh, scholarship nights uh, that I went to both Fermi and Enfield, and uh, it was terrific. The, the support this community gives in local scholarships to, to our kids was just phenomenal. It was just really, really, really good, and a number of other uh, folks were there as well. Um, and finally, uh, likewise, I'd add my uh, uh, thanks to John and Tony for all they've done, and you know, uh, uh, we want to um, let them know uh, how fondly we feel for both of you and what you've done for us, and you've made a difference. And I, I think you sit back and you, I, I know when I get in, you wonder whether all that work was worth it. And I think in both your cases, it certainly was. You, you, you will be missed and, and uh, you won't be forgotten. But um, yeah, you could run for school board, though, if you guys really wanted to at some point, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Never know. <laughs> anyway, uh, at this point, uh, I, I, cl I cl close the uh, uh, um, board board uh, uh, comments, uh, board member comments, and I'd entertain a motion to suspend the rules uh, and add an item at, at this point so that uh, we could uh, invite the mayor up with, for a proclamation. So moved. M moved by moved by Vinny, seconded by uh, Kevin. Okay, uh, all those in favor by uh, by a show of hands. Any opposed? Okay, uh, then we're gonna add it on at this point, John. I'll ask the mayor to come up and we have a microphone for you. Okay. Uh, we'll, we'll bring up the other board uh, council, uh, councilors as well. Thank you for coming here. Thank you for being here, we appreciate it. Thanks. Well, it is, um, thank you for the invitation to be here and it is, um, my pleasure, our pleasure. I did invite the entire council, but it was, um, it was my fault, it was a, a little last minute. Um, so I wanna thank Councilman Arnone and Councilman Kensler for, for joining in. And um, if I could have Tony Torrey come over here, please. So Tony, uh, on behalf of the town of Enfield, we have a proclamation for you honoring your service to Enfield Public Schools and uh, the town of Enfield. 
And uh, first of all, I want to say um, 59 years, or actually starting work in 1959. And um, for all of my involvement when I was a student, because um, I remember meeting you then first, and then uh, working together in, uh, as a councilman and uh, as our um, as the assistant superintendent. It, it, I truly, over the years, learned that your number one priority was the students and um, your impact on the school system since 1959 is throughout. And uh, what a stellar career. Uh, it's been our honor as a town to have uh, you serve our school district. And uh, it's very rare to have someone um, stay with one district and be uh, here for the entire career. And uh, upon your retirement, we wanted to honor your service. And the proclamation reads as follows. Proclamation honoring Anthony A. Torrey for his years of service. Whereas Tony Torrey joined the Enfield School District in 1959, and whereas Tony has held numerous positions within the town of Enfield School District, such as teacher, math department chairperson, assistant principal, principals at both Enrico Fermi High School and Enfield High School, ending his tenure as assistant superintendent. And whereas Tony Torrey created Enfield Public Schools anti-bullying policy and safe school climate plan, and I'm sure we could list hundreds of other things here in the, in the proclamation. Whereas citizens of Enfield are grateful to Tony for his dedication in placing the needs of children first in all decision making, and his outstanding leadership in preparing our children to meet the challenges of society. And whereas Tony Torrey will be retiring as the assistant superintendent of the Enfield School System after 53 years of service. And whereas Tony is being honored for his loyal and dedicated service for the past years. And whereas Tony Torrey will be missed both professionally and as a friend. And we extend our appreciation for his outstanding performance of duty. And now, therefore, I, Scott Copen, Mayor of the Town of Enfield, also expressing the sentiment of the Town Council, the Town Administration, and the entire community, to hereby honor and express deepest gratitude for his countless contributions and exemplary, exemplary service to our community. Signed today, June 12, 2012, on behalf of the Town of Enfield, thank you so much for your years of service, and congratulations on your retirement, and uh, we wish you the best of luck. And if, uh, if I could have Dr. Gallagher come up as well. And I know you really don't like this, but. <laughs> Which makes it more fun, right? <laughs> <laughs> it was a surprise. And, uh, and, and, and for you, John, um, your tenure basically started, because I've been on the council for 19 years, and you've served our, our school district for 20. And uh, I remember you coming into town, and um, the change, change is always good. And, uh, breathe the breath, uh, you know, a, a breath of fresh air into our school system. And I've had the pleasure of working with you for, for 19 years. You've guided the ship. Unfortunately, towards the end, you know, we hit this recession and depression and, and tough choices have had to be made. But I tell you, I appreciate your leadership in stepping up in, in all of the, the uh, changes that we've had to implement over the past year and, and you, uh, past years. And you've been right there along uh, guiding the school system um, with the assistance of the town, and I really appreciate your leadership over, over the 20 years, but especially since uh, we've been able to work closely together over the last five years. And uh, so, too, the town wants to thank you for your 20 years of service uh, to our school district and our community as a whole. And so we have a proclamation for you also honoring uh, Dr. John Gallagher for his years of service. Whereas John Gallagher has been the superintendent of schools for the Enfield District since 1992, whereas our community is extremely appreciative for John's outstanding services, leadership, and dedication, and whereas citizens of Enfield are grateful to John for his dedication in placing the needs of children first in all decision making 
and his outstanding leadership in preparing our children to meet the challenges of society. And whereas John Gallagher has been instrumental in the development of the kindergarten through eighth grade reorganization plan, and whereas John has, with enthusiasm and effectiveness, made an excellent and constructive contribution to the town of Enfield, and whereas John Gallagher will be retiring as a superintendent of the Enfield school system after 20 years of service, and whereas Dr. John Gallagher will be missed both professionally and as a friend, and we extend our very best wishes for his outstanding performance of duty. And now therefore I, Scott Copen, mayor of the town of Enfield, also expressing the sentiment of the town council, the town administration, and the entire community to hereby honor and extend our sincere appreciation for his work and wish him well in his future endeavors. Signed today, June 12, 2012. John, thank you, congratulations, and best wishes. Thank you, Scott. Okay, enough of this celebration stuff. We're just going to get back to business here. Uh, Dr. Gallagher, item 11, superintendent's report. Yes, um, some of the, the um, board members have mentioned this already. We've just come from the uh, Mount Carmel Society, and they hosted tonight's National Honor Society um, dinner. I think it's either the eighth or ninth straight year they've done that. Um, we really appreciate their graciousness and, and recognizing the accomplishment of our students. It's always a, a fun event over there. Um, graduation ceremonies, as you've heard, there's been some already. You have three more coming up. The Enfield Transitional Learning Academy will hold their graduation ceremony on Thursday, June 14th at 11 a.m. in the Alcorn school cafeteria. Enfield High School will hold their graduation ceremony on Wednesday, June 20th, and Fermi High School will hold their graduation ceremony on Thursday, June 21st. Um, the two high school ceremonies begin at 6 p.m., and the safe graduation immediately follows, and weather permitting, the graduations will be outdoors on the athletic fields, and in the event of rain, the ceremony will move into the school gymnasiums. Um, Mrs. LeBlanc mentioned this already, the reorganization school climate survey. All of the pre-K through eighth grade parents and guardians should have received a survey asking their opinion on a variety of topics related to the reorganization and school climate. And we ask that everyone completes the survey and return it as directed. The directions, as you, as you said, you can have your child bring it back to school in the envelope. You can drop it off at the board office. You can mail it back to the board office. They are to be anonymous. You, we, we're asking people not to sign them. Obviously, you want to, you can. But um, they are anonymous and what we're hoping is that we can get them back in time process them and at the next meeting the June 26 board meeting share the results if for some reason we run into a glitch and we don't make that it'll be for the first meeting in July we want to share the results there is a special meeting tomorrow night you'll have a special meeting on June 13 starting at 6 30 p.m. in the Barnard School Conference Room and the majority of the agenda will be an executive session for interviewing candidates for some of the administrative openings that you have Last day of school, assuming that there's no more school cancellations due to snow, um, it will be Friday, June 22nd. And what we're doing is we're making up the six days from Storm Alfred. Interestingly enough, we got through this entire winter without a full lost day due to weather. We had one or two late starts, I think, and, and one early dismissal. But um, we, we, if it wasn't for old Storm Alfred, we would have been getting out um, a little bit earlier. So we're making up the six days that we owe the, um, the students and the state. And we want to remind everyone, we have early dismissals on June 21st and June 22nd, the last two days of school. Okay. Um, we do have a new mentoring program coordinator, and I believe she walked in when I was, was, was um, watching the, the door there a little bit. And I'd like to uh, announce that Mary Scott, and I'd ask Mary to stand up so the board could, could see you, is the new coordinator for the mentoring program. A lot of you know her, and she's Mary's the, um, either the past or the current, or Hale PTO, you're finished too, so you've retired, but, but she, was, she was the Hale PTO um, president this year. And any adult interested in the mentoring program, we're, they're always looking for mentors, you can go on the board's webpage and there's a spot there to, to see the mentoring program and you can contact Mary through that. So thank you for coming, Mary. That, that ends my report, Mr. Neville. Very good. Are there any board committee reports? Tina? 
I, I think this one's great. I think it's funny. Um, I'm on the high school consolidation committee, and as you know, we're no longer meeting, but <laughs> Randy Daigle and Pat Droney, Randy's our chair of the, um, they're going on da <laughs> Bax and O'Brien 102.1 <laughs> tomorrow okay. to talk about our high school consolidation around 7 a.m. So tune into your radios. Is there a call in? Is there a call? I don't know if there's a oh, call I'd love in. To call. I would love to call in. <laughs> So I, I, I thought that was funny. Um, <laughs> we met with um, Representative Kiner, and we were on Kiner's Corner with the um, Dean Petroselli, um, the architect, uh, this past week. And um, that's that. Um, to see the presentation, uh, you can tune in on Thursdays on, I believe, Channel 16, and it'll be on the Kiner's Corner. So, um, And then there might be another Kiner's Corner. We're not sure. We're just waiting to see. So tune in tomorrow, 102.1, around 7 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds great. I'll set my radio. <laughs> are there any other board uh, committee reports? Okay. Uh, are there any uh, approvals needed for accounts and payroll? No. Okay. Uh, any unfinished, unfinished business? Seeing none, we'll move on to new business. 15A, approve the 2012-13 student representatives and alternates. John? Sure. Um, earlier this evening, the board met the um, student reps and the alternates for next year, and basically you need to have a, a board approval for that. As you mentioned, Mr. Neville will attend an orientation session in the near future, and if anyone is interested in what they're doing or what the responsibilities are, if they go to board policy 9160, they can read what the um, duties and responsibilities are. The students were before you. You met Brandon and Rachel from Enfield High School, and you met Katie and Fermi, excuse me, Katie and Emily from Fermi, and their official term begins in September and it runs through through the June they're welcome to come to the summer meetings but they're not required to and at this point mr. Neville the board needs to take action um, to appoint those students for I'd entertain next a motion to uh, accept these students and the alternates for the 2012-13 school year so moved moved by Vinny is there a second okay. second by Joyce is there any discussion all those in favor by a show of hands any opposed any abstentions approved uh, the next item there is the 15B, item 15B, contribution to Kite. Okay. I, b I believe Mrs. LeBlanc is going to address this, and okay. Amy Whitbrow's in the audience. She might want to come forward. Maybe if Amy come forward while we go through sure this, that'd the, be great. The um, light is on on the, on the microphone there. Hey, Tina? Uh, Amy presented to the Finance Committee at the last meeting in May um, that they ha are going forward. Uh, they have applied for their community, uh, the grant, and basically they need to get match half of the grant. So the grant is for 50000 and they need donations in the amount of 25000 So um, currently she is asking the board for approximately $4,200 towards this match because if we don't meet the match, they're not eligible for the grant. So that is what is she? That's what she's asking from the finance committee. Okay. Um, the money. Go yeah, no, go ahead. I, 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 do we need to have a motion to, to have this discussion, or is it a better way to do it? Can we hear what the status of their? Yeah. Sure. That'd be great. Sure. Amy. Um, like Tina just explained, in order to get uh, fifty thousand dollars in grant money from the Graustein Foundation we need to have $25,000 in matching funds that is raised locally, and it needs to be used um, for operational and project support for KITE. Their, their whole goal for, from Graustein is to create a community collaborative that some, you know, it can be sustained, and so that is their whole reasoning behind it. Our grant application has been approved. They, they really liked our grant. Um, the only thing that we need to show them is we have the 25000 At the current time, Lego Children's Trust is giving us 10000 The town of Enfield is giving us $4,200. Um, those are the only ones that I can tell you with 100% certainty that tonight we are receiving. <coughs> the other monies that we, we know we're receiving, we just aren't certain of the amount. Our local United Way is meeting on Thursday, and they are going to um, vote to give us somewhere between four and seven thousand. And Lego's employees have held a golf tournament, and they are donating the profits of that 
which they believe to be between 500 and possibly 700 to 1,000. Um, that was held on Friday. We just have not heard back yet how much they are donating. So that's where we are. I can tell you that if, we're, if you add those up, if we got the most from everybody, you'll see we're over the amount. Whatever we are over can be put towards next year's $25,000 contribution because we will have to do the same thing again next year. Okay. And, and what is the amount that you're asking uh, uh, for us? $4,200. Uh, equal to what the town uh, allocation is, match the town council's allocation. Okay, and all of this money goes right back to the kids, correct? Right, Kite. I mean, I think yeah, right. I could tell everybody what Kite does. Oh, I no. brought information, if, but it, yes, Kite directly serves the children. Okay. Anybody have any questions for uh, Amy at this point in time? At that point, I'd entertain a, a motion. What? Can I make the motion? Yes. Go ahead, Tina. M make the motion? Yes. Yeah. Um, I motion. I move that, or is it I move or, okay, I've never made a motion before. I move <laughs> that uh, the, the board goes ahead and donates $4,200 to the kite program for the matching portion. Okay. Second. Is, is, uh, moved by Tina and seconded by uh, Donna. Is there any discussion? There being none, uh, roll call, please. Mr. Grady? Yes. Mrs. Suzak? Yes. Mr. Feely? Yes. Ms. Hall? Yes. Mrs. Rancourt? Yes. Mr. Janitis? I'll abstain. Mrs. LeBlanc? Yes. Chairman Neville? Yes. Motion passes. Very good. Item 15C, action on healthy food certification statement. Dr. Gallagher? Thank you, Amy. The, the, the food lobbyists must be very strong in the state of Connecticut because this is one of the mandates that the state has that each year you have to come back and vote on this and send it, send it over to them. And um, basically we're doing as we've done in past years and the administration continues to recommend that the board elect not to certify the statement uh, that basically says it would require the board, to, the district to abide by the Connecticut nutrition standards. And our reasons basically remain the same and they're stated in the May 23rd memo from Diane Edwards. And just so that the viewing public knows what we're talking about here, the Enfield School Lunch Program currently meets the federal and state nutrition guidelines. And if we were to move to the nutrition standards, it would impact fundraising across the district by, by a large majority of the booster club groups and the various groups that are there. It would require a district contact person, and they're giving you 10 cents per, me per meal as the incentive. That would not cover the cost associated with the implementation. So we've had this for several years in a row and we've always recommended that you you, you not do that um, if I can add something before I ask the board to take action I have been meeting with Mrs. Edwards and I know we were planning to come back to the next board meeting because she wants to share some of her information about their their monies and they've been talking to the finance committee and I got a feeling they're going to be re making a recommendation <coughs> to increase food prices for lunches and we're, we're getting comparison data as to what other districts are and that type of thing but yeah, Mrs. Edwards will probably be at the next board meeting to talk to you about that but for tonight what we're talking about is the healthy food certification statement and we're recommending that we do not <coughs> enter into that agreement with them um, roughly the last time we checked better than half the state the half the schools in the state don't do it this is just um, too unwielding with the amount of red tape is attached to it for what you're getting back and and the the red tape or whatever that goes with it would cost us more than the money we're getting, correct? Yes, the, the ten cents per per knot, and it, it it has quite an impact on. It. I think she wrote a very good memo. If you were to read her memo, that's in in there, you can see the reasons for it. No red tape. I, I would move that, a motion. I would move that we do not participate in the program. Is there a second? Second, second by Vinny. Moved by Kevin. Is there any discussion? Roll call, please. Mr. Grady. Mrs. Suzak? Yes. Mr. Feely? Yes. Ms. Hall? Yes. Mrs. Rancourt? Yes. Mr. Janitis? Yes. Mrs. LeBlanc? Yes. Chairman Neville? Yes. Motion passes. Okay. Make a motion to go into executive session? Second. Second. There's a motion made by uh, Vinny that we go into executive session for matters pertaining to 
the Simkovitz estate to real estate, the Simkovitz estate, and it's seconded by Kevin, I believe. Uh, any, any discussion? And pending litigation. And pending, and excuse me, thank you, and pending litiga uh, uh, litigation. Uh, it's, it, is there any discussion? If not, uh, uh, roll call, please. Mr. Grady? Yes. Mrs. Suzak? Yes. Mr. Feely? Yes. Ms. Hall? Yes. Mrs. Rancourt? Yes. Mr. Genitis? Yes. Mrs. LeBlanc? Yes. Chairman Neville? Yes. The motion passes. Where, where are we meeting, Jeff? The Enfield room is open. We can use that. And if not, we can use the Skidiko room, I think. There should be one. And if, and if both are still being used, we can go into the um, lounge area. 